There are many ancient sites which upon exploration create an air of doubt surrounding the academic explanation as to their origins, raising logical questions within the minds of the astute. With Iran being a place littered with such structures, one of the most famous of which known as Persepolis. Found upon the banks of the river Polvar, this plateau of mythical carvings simply baffle the modern man. According to permitted academic study, Persepolis dates back a mere 2,500 years. I say mere due to several reasons. First, the lack of ability of those who were living at this particular time, the advanced techniques used within the creation of the site, and the laser-like stone-cut precision, demonstrating techniques utilized by a civilization far more technologically capable than those currently claimed as having been responsible. Thus, I must conclude they predate the academically claimed culprits and are, in fact, the work of a lost civilization. The site possesses claimed Achaemenid styles of architecture, although we feel these claims are a misconception and are, in reality, the work of someone else. Declared a World Heritage Site in 1979, the ancient Persians claimed it as their own city, naming it Persa, which means Old Persian. However, it seems, like so many other inexplicable sites found around the world, it was simply re-inhabited. Yet unlike these many other sites, inscriptions found upon buried treasure at the site actually possesses an inscription left by one of the oldest rulers of the Persians, openly admitting this re-inhabitation as a reality. Treasure found still successfully concealed at the site, a sign of the people's loyalty to their king, not discovered until modern times, presumably protected by them and its secret location, until their death at the hand of Alexander the Great's invaders. Solid gold and silver tablets preserving the king's account of the site's origin. Quote, Darius, the great king, king of kings, king of countries, son of Hytaspis, this is the kingdom which I hold, from the Sache, which is beyond Logdia, to Cush, from Sindh to the Indus Valley of Lydia, and the oldest of Persia, Sparta, this bestowed upon me by Ahura Mazda, the greatest of gods. May Ahura Mazda protect me and my royal house. An inscription I perceive as an explanation that the ruler himself due to the site's incredible nature, believed it had been built by the gods and, by divine right, had been bestowed upon him. Archaeological evidence accumulated by the French archaeologist André Godard, who excavated Persepolis in the early 1930s, believed it was Cyrus the Great who chose the site Persepolis was built upon and that Darius I built the terrace and the palaces. These conclusions, I assert, were due to Darius and Cyrus reutilizing such structures as their places of burial. This, due to their divine perceptions, explained upon these once hidden treasures. However, these rulers, dated well within permitted archaeological timelines for man, are accompanied by the countless archaeological artifacts, predictably left over by these cultures who never experienced cataclysm thus remain perfectly preserved, excavated, and flaunted to the many inquisitive people who visit these museums each year. However, the contradictory inscriptions still reveal very little regarding origins of the ruins in which they were found within. Ruins which are simply unexplainable. When one visits the site, they are initially confronted with gigantic megalithic stones, not only within its foundations creating the platform used as a stronghold for many years, but also, somehow set aloft, forming still existing trilithons, which regardless of the demolition efforts undertaken by Alexander, still litter the site. A 125,000 square meter terrace artificially constructed, partly cut straight out of Ramat Mountain. An additional factor which supports my argument of a highly advanced builder are the Lamassu. These mythical animals, reminiscent of centaurs, are many tons in weight, 
and in a previous video, we showed the tremendous challenge a mere 150 years ago transporting such megaliths was. Not to mention the tremendous artistic achievements these stone carvings would have been, along with countless other intricate, masterfully carved artworks throughout the site, which mystify all who gaze upon them. Furthermore, and perhaps most interesting, are the far more primitive-looking versions. Some argue were incomplete, others argue were attempts by future primitive cultures. These attempts, although in some areas share tool markings reminiscent of patterns like those of the stone-cutting technologies we have recently been studying in depth, may just be mere coincidences due to the random hacking that seems to have been undertaken upon the stones. Due to the positioning of the Persepolis Plateau, it was logically not constructed as a military stronghold, but rather a temple devoted to something else. A build surrounding this ancient civilization's belief systems, or possible observations, of many alignments in relation to precessions only just coming to light. Due to its location, far away from any strategical placement found within a remote and mountainous region, although it was an inconvenient residence for the ruler of the empire, it was still chosen as a discreetly positioned capital of the Persian Empire. Yet clearly not a position chosen by the Persians, but merely reclaimed as their own work. Far away from the melting pot of developing Persian culture, the country's true capitals were Susa, Babylon, and Ecbatana. With the Greeks completely unaware of its existence throughout their own reign, only plundered by Alexander the Great's eventual far-reaching invasion. It is a site full of compelling features, most of which in direct contradiction to that which is claimed by modern academia, and indeed their institutional cohorts, Iran's museums. It is a site we find highly compelling. In our last video, we covered the enormous artificially created platform known as Persepolis. Claimed as the work of the Persians, I believe, however, due to the astonishingly advanced nature of the stonework present at the site, and also the inscription of it having been an offering by the gods given to the previous Persian king, that regardless of academic assertions, it is a surviving relic of a civilization far older than they would ever admit to. Found upon several gold and silver tablets found buried within the site, inscribed with a message left by these more modern inhabitants, thanking the gods for the creation of said site, concluded by many ancient civilizations all over the world, who, due to the rigidity of the protected paradigms regarding the chronological timeline of man, are claimed as the builders of said sites, regardless of whether these same institutions' archaeological endeavors prove them incapable sites that these so-called builders must have been perceived as only ever being able to have been built by the gods themselves. For even to this day, they remain astonishingly ancient achievements, undoubtedly the work of a highly advanced, technologically innovative lost civilization. Naqsh-e Rostam, for example, an ancient necropolis located about 12 kilometers northwest of Persepolis, is in a set of rock-cut structures, hewn from the mountainside with such precision, they are simply unexplainable as the work of any ancient civilization academia has permitted the study of. Clearly made by the same civilization that once created Persepolis, as within this area there are countless enigmatic and astonishingly precise stone structures, some created using enormous megalithic blocks while others carved directly out of solid stone. My own recent research, which has differentiated two ancient civilizations, the Cyclopean and the Polygonal civilizations, is solely based on the separation of their technological prowess, differentiations and similarities with the Cyclopeans, although not displaying the same capability of building walls as that of the Polygonals, were still linked to astonishing builds such as Petra. These astounding structures also carved straight from bedrock, extremely similar to many of the rock-cut structures found throughout Iran. 
However, Persepolis possesses some techniques that although no one has seemingly looked at closely, is a strange, unique method of linking the stones of some of these structures together. Not only an enigmatic structure, predictably claimed as the Tomb of Cyrus, but they are also present within the impressive yet seemingly demolished fortress, possibly destroyed during an invasion which can be found nearby. Known as the Fortress of Pasargadae, this building is not only constructed using Cyclopean signature blocks, but it seems the same clampic techniques was used within its construction. Intriguingly, however, although these mysterious clamping features are still within the tomb of Cyrus, they are all seemingly missing from the fortress in Pisargadae. The questions these anomalies raise are many in number, yet unlike academia, we do not claim to know the answers. We are merely in pursuit of them, slowly compiled from our gathering of the inexplicable sites worldwide. Eventually, we hope to decipher not only why they were placed there, who built such structures, but indeed, how. Nakesh e Rastam is not the only rock cut structure of astonishing precision found within Iran. Many other precision cut artifacts can be found littering the area. Mada in Salah, for example, being a series of structures also claimed as tombs, created from single enormous rocks. To claim such work as that of primitive tool wielding ancestors, I find absurd. Yet the more I look into these sites, the more confusing and thus enigmatic they become. Not only does academia claim that the plateau of Persepolis was completed, which is clearly not only an obvious misconception, but also, the unfinished sections seem to have been attempted to have been finished with primitive tools. But certain places within the area possess the stonework of the Cyclopean civilization, yet with unique clamping techniques found only in Iran, with additional structures which are located near the rock-cut structures of Nakeshi Rastam, seemingly having been cut and built with blocks of a deliberately opposite type of cutting style. Several alternative scholars who have explored the site have hypothesized that many areas were attempted to have been renovated and reconstructed by a later civilization. And although we know that many of the surviving columns, toppled during Alexander the Great's invasion, were indeed re-erected, the enigmatic chisel marks found throughout the site, and also the Cyclopean style blocks found within the fortress on the hill, to us, seems to indicate that whoever attempted these finishing works were far less capable than those who originally created the ancient ruins found throughout Iran. Furthermore, evidential features found within the area of Persepolis. One such feature, known as the Great Staircase, is seemingly the most highly advanced precision work of the Cyclopeans. This pinnacle in architectural design indicating the nearing of the end of their legacy upon our planet. Did they merely rediscover these incredible rock-cut structures? Were they the builders of such? For regardless of the fact that I have indeed linked their work to the astonishing feats of Petra, the similarly astonishing rock-cut temples of India and also Myra, which we have confirmed through the identification of the stonework and tool marks as having indeed been the work of the Cyclopeans. Were these ancient sites their final creations, left unfinished due to their demise? If so, the question remains, why do so many structures contain enigmatic techniques of clamping found nowhere else on Earth? And why are these structures near Nakashi Rastam seemingly built in direct opposite methods to their signature cut stones, reliefs instead? Were they the work of the same civilization? Or possibly a third as yet undiscovered group, who clearly accomplished an astounding degree of skill in stone carving themselves? We find ancient Iran not only perplexing, but incredibly compelling. Who built the Balevi Mausoleum? There are many, as yet, unexplained ruins which can be found within modern-day Turkey. The temples of Baalbek, the Patera pipelines, among many others, yet the Balevi Mausoleum, like the other most astonishing ancient structures to be found here upon our Earth, 
are quietly overlooked. It is a monumental ancient structure located near Saichuk in the Aegean province of Izmish. It is the second largest ancient mausoleum in Anatolia, which, predictably, academia contends as a tomb dated from the Hellenistic era around the 3rd century BC. However, like many other of the wondrous ancient structures to be found within antiquity, it contains astonishing, precise, as yet unexplained architecture, indicative of a lost knowledge, thus lost civilization. The Belivi Mausoleum has seemingly survived the eons, still possessing an array of compelling features, which fly in the face of current academic explanation. How did an ancient civilization, even if, as academia claims, was placed a mere 2,000 years ago, accomplish such precision within the stonework? Or indeed, accomplish such precision in the placement of such enormous ancient stones? It is known as a tomb, because like many of the other structures that were clearly of an astonishing nature at earlier times within history, were undoubtedly chosen by leading individuals as their place of burial. With the ruler of the Seleucid dynasty, Antiochus II Theos, his nickname, meaning God, was given to him by the residents of Miletus. Antiochus II died in 246 BC. This body, and indeed his rather modern legacy, has allowed academia to claim a date to the construction. However, the advanced precision techniques involved in its original build are, fortunately, still clear for all to see. Indeed, the Belevi Mausoleum could have once been the burial site of an important person. Yet we feel that this original individual dates from a time far before anything academia would ever permit the admittance of. The chamber, or sarcophagus of the mausoleum, precisely carved from solid rock, had a square plan with a length of 29 meters and a height of 10 meters. From the outside, the rock obscuring the mausoleum was covered with marble slabs. The marble was traced to a quarry in the vicinity of Ephesus, yet to complete the decorations of the mausoleum, up to 2,500 cubic meters of marble had to have once been excavated. There was also once a second level, surrounded by 28 columns, although over the eons, this has virtually turned to dust. When completed, it would have formed a steep pyramid with a statue crowning its top. Who built the Belevi Mausoleum? Was it once an elaborate ancient tomb? If so, who was buried there? It is undoubtedly highly compelling. Tokyo's Imperial Palace Home of the Japanese Emperor and a place which holds many secrets. Some it seems hidden in plain sight for countless centuries. For many years people have visited this marvelous building, and the perfectly kept grounds it is placed within. What is interesting regarding its historical history is the fact that much of it is hidden and yet to be told. The oldest historical accounts for the palace date back to 1457 AD when a great warrior known as Ido Shigetsugu built the castle Ido on the site. Ido's clan would perish in the 15th century as a result of uprisings in the Kanto and Ota Dokan regions of Japan. However, what is interesting regarding the palace's construction is its foundations, including the exterior wall, which many now believe was already in existence before the castle's construction and also the reason the site was chosen all those years ago by the warrior Ido himself. The construction techniques visible in the original construction are clearly evidence of highly advanced building techniques, completed by a clearly highly advanced civilization. And these methods used within the foundations were not replicated throughout the more recent structure, as if forgotten between builds. Additionally, a piece of artifactual evidence was recently covered a highly compelling building technique which unquestionably links many ancient sites to one another found all over the world showing an intercontinental sharing of building knowledge many millennia ago. 
Known as the missing metal clamps, their carved seats still present upon many of the most ancient stonework at the palace, eroded away metal clamps used to keep the stones firmly in place as they settled over the following years after construction. Present at countless sites across the world, a technique somehow shared worldwide, only differing from country to country in their process of manufacture. The evidence to suggest that the Palace of Japan is in fact built upon a far older and possibly once far more spectacular structure seems overwhelming. Yet questions remain, most obvious of which, who built the structure to begin with? When did they build it? And what was its purpose? Thankfully, the more we understand regarding the perplexing techniques used by this elusive, yet clearly once highly advanced civilization, the more of these ruins we are seemingly spotting, allowing for their study and subsequent preservation before lost forever. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. Bazda Cave within modern day Turkey is unquestionably an astonishing place. An enormous cave system that many people simply assume is a natural formation, with select areas quarried out, subsequently used to build numerous ruins throughout the area. However, what many people have seemingly overlooked, and we presume funded academics have deliberately ignored, are the signatures left all over the stonework throughout the network of caverns, strongly indicating that this huge complex was once, somehow, hewn by ancient man. Also, and perhaps most intriguingly, is that this task was completed using a number of different advanced tools, whose marking, thanks to ours and others' astute research, has also been found scarred upon many other ancient sites, some located far away from this enigmatic cave system. The stone, once quarried out to create this enormous cavern, subsequently located as having been used to create a number of remarkable precision-cut monuments, including a once-existing wall which surrounded an ancient site known as Hiron. Additionally, due to the realization of this quarried stone having been used in Hiron, in addition to our own previous research, we have successfully linked Bazda to yet more ancient ruins, all dated to vastly different eras within history. Thanks to our channel's creator possessing a photographic memory, we have correlated undeniable characteristic similarities, connecting many of these ancient sites throughout the world. Firstly, the signatures left by advanced stone-cutting technologies, tool marks left upon the cave system's walls. Scars upon the stonework, which are present at many other sites, Baalbek in Lebanon, Petra in Jordan, Yangshan Quarry within China, and at least two rock-cut monuments within India, the roof of a precision-cut cave, and an unfinished temple known as Veduvan Coil. This crescent-shaped scarring, often of an overlapping fashion, we feel, is reminiscent of scars left by modern-day tunnel boring equipment. Yet due to the lack of in-depth research surrounding such anomalies, with these tool marks, as far as we are aware, only receiving limited attention at Baalbek and merely photographed at Yangshan, have begun to name such markings ourselves in an effort to categorize and identify such curiosities being discovered worldwide, with these now known to us as crescent cup and ring marks. The second form of scarring, found upon much of the cave's roof, now known to us as groove and ridge markings, are distinctly different in form and appearance to the crescent cup and ring marks. These rows of grooved scars, however, are identical to those found in plain sight upon the unfinished obelisk located within Aswan Quarry, Egypt. A stone monument well over a thousand tons in weight which has long been academically argued as having been abandoned where it lay, due to a fault line discovered during the quarrying process. However, interestingly, 
Others have presented strong evidence that this crack appeared later within history. A fellow alternative researcher, Chris Dunn, argues within his book Advanced Technology in Ancient Egypt that the crack happened later on in the obelisk's life, and that the monolith was abandoned before the fault appeared. Backing up his claim, he shows that details upon the monument were being engraved over the top of the location of the fault line, an undertaking that would have clearly been illogical. Although he does not put forward a postulation as to why this crack occurred, we believe it may have been due to a shift in the surrounding geography, more than likely a ground-shifting earthquake, not only cracking the obelisk, but possibly due to and accompanied by a cataclysmic event, which quite possibly caused the demise of the civilization, who were liberating the obelisk, thus leaving it unfinished. But I digress. Our focus is upon the scars left by enigmatic, clearly advanced stone-cutting tools, preserved with clarity upon the erosion-resistant granite of the obelisk. These exact markings also undeniably litter the ceiling of the Bazda cave. Additionally, these groove and ridge marks are also found upon the megalithic, often polygonal stonework within Peru, at Cusco, the fortress of Sacsayhuaman, and Machu Picchu, to name but a few. The third set of signature scarring upon the cave stone walls links Bazda Cave to another similarly gigantic artificially created cave system, known as Longyu Caves, located within China. Once an undoubtedly immense excavation, yet the quarried stone from this undertaking has never been located. Millions of tons of stone seemingly vanished from the face of the earth. However, thankfully, the quarried stone from the Bazda cave systems, as mentioned, was utilized and located. However, the civilization responsible for shaping these quarried stones at Haran were unquestionably responsible for several other sites found around the world. YouTube channel New Earth, first linking these curiously shaped stones to Nimrod's fortress on Mount Hermon with Jerash in Jordan. With us continuing this trail of connecting ancient dots, thankfully due to the uniqueness of stonework. Let's compare the Nimrod fortress with this uh, historic city in Jordan, which according to mainstream sources was conquered by the Romans and they built their typical Roman architecture consisting of columns and so on on the top of the older ruins. So here they are assuring us that the Nimrod style large blocks are pre-Roman. Now those very same blocks, when they are in Baalbek, they are telling us it's Roman. In the Temple Mount, they are again assuring us that they are some 2000 years old. In Bosnia, they are telling us they are whatever, three or more thousand years old and of course they are built by some obscure unknown tribe of which even the name they had to fabricate. Enabling us to link the Royal Kurgan in Crimea to New Earth's discoveries and now to the ancient ruins of Haran in Turkey. Not only can we argue that this cave system was indeed man-made, but is the only site we know of that possesses such an array of these enigmatic stone-cutting technology scars, allowing us to successfully link it to at least 15 ancient sites around the world. The cave itself, Basran, Haran, Baalbek, Petra, Jerash, Yangshan, Longyu, Vetavan Coil, Malmala Param, Cusco, Sacsayhuaman, and Machu Picchu, Nimrod's Fortress, and the Royal Kurgan possibly many others we are yet to recognize. In conclusion, the vast array of different, as yet unidentified, advanced stone-cutting equipment scars present within the cave, each leaving its own unique signature upon the stone. The shaping of these stones, unique to an unknown civilization's signature handiwork, found worldwide, used within an array of as yet unexplained ruins academically claim to be of vastly different ages, 
and the work of vastly different cultures. We find it not only clear evidence of academic fallacy, but incredibly compelling. Many civilizations have been and gone here upon our planet. Countless artifacts and historical studies can and have been undertaken into their existence. We are able to decipher their daily lives, their religious beliefs and practices, even their languages. However, in doing so, we have never been able to decode any knowledge or explanation for the countless, seemingly impossible ancient feats, lost abilities of stonemasonry, no documentation found within any hieroglyph, literature, parchment, or other ancient text. Yet pyramids, polygonal masonry, multi-thousand-ton megaliths, along with countless other curious, clear signatures of a lost civilization's work exists. And due to this mystery regarding how these sites were created, we have to presume that those who constructed them were placed at a far earlier time within history, one that was prior to a global flood, possibly the aftermath of a near-extinction-level event, manifesting as a form of global amnesia and severing connections between continents, possibly for 10,000 years. Segesta within Sicily not only looks the same age as that of the foundation walls of Baalbek, and indeed the gargantuan megaliths found within the Trilithon. But the enormous temple is still standing along with its amphitheater, which, if we look to the still surviving polygonal stage flooring present at the theater within Delphi, a site we have covered in the past, one which is also littered with polygonal walls, we find more support for the theory that these amphitheaters, with their incredible acoustics, are also remnants left by this same lost civilization. Yet we feel the smoking gun are the protuberances which are still visible within its foundation blocks. It is of no surprise to us that its origins are hotly contested, with many academic teams concluding that it was merely the work of traveling Trojans, this regardless of the multi-ton columns that were so perfectly laid they all still stand to this day. When one considers that protuberances are found on polygonal masonry all around the world, and that modern stonemasons are now exploring interlocking blocks, with some such as large Lego blocks already in mass production, it is no surprise that while many claim it to be Greek, others claim it not. This will not cease anytime soon. Many religious beliefs have gained traction in regard to its original purpose. Thus, conveniently, there is little chance that this contention will move forward. Who built the ruins of Segesta? When did they build them? We find the possibilities highly compelling. Ancient Uparts are undoubtedly one of the most interesting subjects in regard to lost antiquities. Many of these artifacts, due to the locations in which they are found within, or the immense age displayed within the erosion seen upon the object, makes them one of the most controversial areas of study. How can one answer the question of how an iron pot is found within a solid lump of coal within a seam over 300 million years in age? Or how the clear imprint of a chariot wheel is found fossilized deep within a mine in Russia? These artifacts, found at hundreds of feet deep in sediment, or displaying a wooden handle petrified into coal, display an undeniably immense age, and as such, are solid pieces of evidence to support our posit of there having been a series of now lost civilizations stretching far into the past. Nature is infamous in being cyclical. Why then would we not be permitted by mainstream academia to presume this be the case for the climates of the Earth as well. 
Regardless of this digression, however, the subject of tonight's video is an incredible artifact which we believe to be that of an ancient upart. However, due to its incredible characteristic, is being masqueraded as that of a much later creation by a far more recent ancestor. Known as the Sword of Gujan, this intriguing artifact has somehow resisted the effects of time, and although it is enormously old, is seemingly as sharp and as shiny today as the day it was made. This remarkable characteristic, although unexplained, is not the only interesting thing about the sword. It also features an incredibly old form of writing. Eight characters are written in an ancient script, now known as bird worm seal script, literally birds and worms characters. Owing to the intricate decorations of the defining strokes, it is very old and is attested to be a variant of seal script. In 1965, while an archaeological survey was being performed along the second main aqueduct of the Zhang River Reservoir in Jingzhou, Hubei, the series of ancient tombs were discovered. A dig started in the middle of October 1965, ending in January 1966, eventually revealing more than 50 ancient tombs. More than 2,000 artifacts were recovered from the sites, including the sword, having been found inside a casket together with a human skeleton. The casket was discovered in the December of 1965 at the Wangshan site number 1, 7 kilometers from the ruins of Ying, currently called Jinishang, once the ancient capital of Chu. The sword was found sheathed in a wooden scabbard, finished in black lacquer. The scabbard had an almost airtight fit with the sword body. Unsheathing the sword revealed an untarnished blade, despite the tomb being soaked in underground water for over 2,000 years. How did this sword retain its incredible condition? Why does it seem as if it is resistant to aging? What sort of metallurgy did the swordsmith once use to create such an amazing object? It is clearly an ancient upart, and one we postulate has an origin now hidden within the bowels of history. It is a remarkable thing, and as such, is highly compelling. In our previous video, we presented a hypothesis, a theory believed by many, one of a now lost or possibly hidden race of ancient giants. Surprisingly, however, Recently, although China is seen as an infamously secretive country, with many tombs and ancient pyramids of gargantuan proportions rarely aerial photographed, let alone explored, it seems that they have, at last, stolen the archaeological world stage with the announcement of a discovery which we may relish, but those whom these remains rest just beyond the clutches of, we would presume rather get a hold of themselves to study and then store away in hidden archives, far from public view, an ongoing effort we have personally read of, dating back to the early 1900s. An ancient graveyard, complete with over 500 giant human remains, has not only been accidentally discovered, but publicly exhumed and most crucial of all, photographed for all the world to see within China. Could this be a retaliatory move with other motives at play? If our previously mentioned theory is true, it would enable man to explain the inexplicably, seemingly impossible size of many of the world's megaliths, and indeed still standing megalithic structures of the world. How a pyramidal, treasury, and many other ancient architectures, lintels, and top stones, often weighing many hundreds of tons, were not only transported from quarries many hundreds of miles, but placed aloft many meters with seeming ease. Furthermore, we have in the past not only postulated and have also presented reams of witness testimony and photographic cooperation, still to be found in newspaper archives across the Western world, describing these finds, but also the Smithsonian's efficiency in not only dealing with the matter, but disappearance of any further reporting, thus expiration. This also supporting the reason for lost pieces of the puzzle, which is inhibiting us from unlocking the secrets to the site's construction. Perhaps we may never know the true motivations for such a controversial exposure in China, 
But nonetheless, the resulting fallout of proof presented for our community is a step closer to the truth, the untangling of a tired and tangled web of lies in which many have weaved. For at the bottom of Pandora's box, there is always hope. Phoenix Hill, Xi'an China. In 1994, an extremely mysterious discovery would be made. Considered by the Chinese as the ninth ancient wonder of the world. A series of 24 ancient, artificial caves were discovered, specialists have been quietly astounded by them. And the more we learn, the more of a spectacular and mysterious achievement they are seen to be. The first thing that struck explorers were their size. Each cave has a minimum floor space of 1,000 square feet, an unimaginable undertaking at the time they were thought to have been constructed. Officially dated prior to the dynasties of China, which began 3,000 years ago, meaning they are very, very old. The walls of the caves are scarred with strange uniform tool marks. The weird thing about the markings, is that they are all set on a 60 degree angle, every single chisel mark within the cave system without exception, is on an exact 60 degree cutting angle. This has led many to suspect that the caves must have somehow been dug using advanced machinery. However, because this feature is unique within our current knowledge of ancient structures, the angle of cutting could indeed have been made by hand, with the purpose of decoration, but this would have made the job of cutting them out even more laborious. Additionally, once the caves had been assessed and explored, a remarkable thing was realized, although the caves were the result of excavating thousands and thousands of tons of rock, this rock seems to have vanished from existence. There is no trace of a spoil pile anywhere to be seen, it is as if the caves have always been there. No traces of their construction has ever been found anywhere, no cave writings, drawings, tools, or human remains, and nothing within historical records. The cave's construction simply doesn't make sense, and any evidence for their construction doesn't exist. Add to this the fact that the cave systems prelate Chinese civilization by some time, and show evidence of being cut out by machine. And the Longyu caves undoubtedly become a curiosity to scientific explanation, and historical understanding, to say the least. 
These remarkable caves are a very strong and solid piece of evidence to suggest that advanced cultures have already been and gone on this planet, or that visitors of extraterrestrial origin visited the planet prior to human development. As far as I am aware, these are the only two possible scenarios for the builders of such a construction. The cave's systems are well over 3,000 years old and still intact, whoever was capable of constructing them, was also capable of disposing of the huge mountains of rock that would have been excavated, without leaving any evidence of how they did this, or indeed built the caves anywhere. The caves are known as one of the largest underground complexes ever discovered. The fact that more is not heard about this wonderful place, is testament to their extraordinary existence, meaning no one within the scientific community, can, or want to try to explain them. Also, which I found highly interesting, when they were discovered they were completely filled with water, whether this was one sort of water, has not been disclosed, but I have personal suspicions as to how this water came to rest within these underground caverns. No fish were found within the caves, which many found odd. However, if you suspected that the waters be residual leftovers from a great flood, water from the great seas of earth, then over time, salt levels would plummet and fish accustomed to sea water would have died. Who do you think built the long new caves? The cave's existence hint towards a hidden history here on our planet, a history that we must unravel if we are ever to fully understand ourselves, and our home.